Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, this whole week has been something else. <laughs> Praise God. Yay. So much truth. So much truth. And I pray indeed, this is my sincere, heartfelt prayer for you, that you will receive understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith now in agreement with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Now, we were looking at the life of Jacob. Now, when we're looking at the life of Jacob, you remember we were talking about the prayer Paul was praying. That you'll be grounded in love. And not just grounded in love, that you'll be able to comprehend with all sense what is the length, the breadth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ. Because a lot of people come to Christ, but they don't understand his love. They don't know it. They don't understand it. And that's because they, first of all, are not grounded in God's love. So we began to look at Jacob's life to see an example of a man who received the love of God and was grounded in it. Jacob grounded in the, Yes, he was. He was grounded in the love of God. I was telling you something earlier. I said, this man had an encounter with God. He made a decision. And from that moment, his life was one way. What do you mean one way? On God. He says that God, this, the Lord will be my God. Now, when you get to that point where you make up your mind that the Lord is your God, then you have known what it means to be grounded in love. It's not just a statement. The Lord is my God. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. It shows in your attitude. Where do you get your money from? Uh-huh. Where a man's treasure is there, his heart will be also. Where do you get your money from? Where do you get your things from? From your sweat or from the Lord? Ah, that's when you will know that the Lord is your God. When you are presented with options in life, you want that thing, okay. You want to get a job, okay. And they say, you need to bring one million naira, and then you get the job. Mm. And you start struggling to raise one million naira. If I can just get one million naira, they have assured me. No, this person is real, he's genuine, he's legit. Just that I need to raise that money. If I can just raise that money. Aha. Uh -huh. Is the Lord your God? Oh, I would. If this thing doesn't, I'll go and take that loan. Aha. Uh -huh. Is the Lord your God? You don't know what it is to have the Lord as your God. You don't know what it is. What it is is you are going to make reference to everything about you as coming from Him. Not just in talking. Because you, you, can, you can get that card and say, ah, Wow, you got the card. It's God, do. What can we do without Him? Meanwhile, you saved for five years to buy that card. Or, or you did some, you know what I mean, some stuff to buy that car. Do you know what it is to have the Lord as your God? Jacob made that commitment, says, then the Lord shall be my God. And this is my commitment to you. Now, fast forward, I told you, he wanted to get married. He had the options 
to send for wealth from his father's house. He could have done that. And Jacob would have gladly done that because that was what was done to him also. Jacob was sitting at home and they brought wife. They paid bride price and everything. They just brought wife too. I said, Oga, see your wife. I said, wow. Now, Jacob, that was Isaac now. Jacob had actually gone a step further. He went to see a wife for himself that he liked. Of course, he obeyed his father's instruction. He got there and he saw someone he liked. What if God leads me to a place that I don't like? What if God leads me? You know, you know, so, you know some people are so amazing. You know, say, hmm, have you prayed about that girl? Have you prayed about that guy that is hanging around you? He said, hmm, I don't want to pray because what if God now tells me the person he wants me to marry is not, is not someone I like? No way! How? Remember, he's, he, he is love. His word is love to you. And he's expecting you to be grounded in him. Hallelujah. How are you grounded in him? If God's, if that's God's choice for me, then I know it is good. Praise God. And, and I believe, now, when I say I believe, this one now, I know it for a truth. That it was the Lord that commanded Jacob not to go back home, not to look that way. Because God wanted to prove in Jacob's life that I am your God. And you know the story, for 14 good years, Jacob walked without pay. In Laban's house, he walked without pay. What do I mean he walked without pay? Every pay he would have gotten was taken for the bride price until he accomplished the years. Every pay he would have gotten went for bride price. Now, after 14 years, Jacob, Jacob wanted to go home. And he said to Laban, say, sir, it's time to go. And Laban said, ah, no, 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 no. I have understood, I have noticed that God has blessed me because of you. Please stay. Let's discuss wages now. And Jacob said, no, you can't pay me. Now, the Lord told me that he was the one that held Jacob back from leaving. And that's because he wanted him to enjoy the fruit of his labor. Now, sometimes even when we walk with that, that's why I was pointing out that this man, Jacob, had so much integrity. Even after he was cheated. Ah, like a Messiah. Oh, Lord. So, Jacob had this boss named Laban, who was cruel, cheated him. Jacob stayed put, serving faithful. I, I, I think I read this scripture to you. Ah. Let me show you the scripture. It will give you an understanding. Now, after Jacob left Laban's house, anytime I read this, it hits, it hits me. Now, Jacob left Laban's house because God had told him it's time to go. Now, he wasn't patient enough to discuss his exit with Laban because he felt Laban would bring up another story. But now this time God was saying, arise, it's time to go back, right? Okay, so he took his wives and then they left quietly, I mean secretly. Now Laban heard that they've gone and chased 
and then you know the story now you can read that from verse 1 chapter 31 now Jacob began to speak after Laban had met him and said, hey why I took my children everything just want to run away like that and then and then Jacob began to speak now I want you to listen to his words verse 38 chapter 30 chapter 31 verse 38 Genesis these 20 years have I been with thee thy ewe and thy she goats have not cast their young and the rams of thy flock have not been eaten that which was torn of beast I brought not unto thee I bear the lust of it and of my hand did thou require it whether stolen by day or stolen by night thus I was in the day the drought consumed me and the frost by night and my sheep departed from my eyes thus have I been 20 years in thy house i saved the 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle and thou hast changed my wages ten times except the lord the god of my fathers and the god of abraham and the fear of isaac have been with me surely thou has sent me away empty god had seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee last yesterday night oh he didn't get that jacob said I, I served you for 20 years in those 20 years i kept your flock in those 20 years the flocks that got stolen i paid for it i didn't bring the reports to you I covered it up. Who was this boss? The one who was changing his wages 10 times. Who was cruel to him. Trying to outsmart him. Now Jacob was the one we call the smart guy. But what smartness did he play in Laban's house? He could have given all the excuses. But Jacob was not a man of excuse. He got the job done. No excuse. He met his target despite the challenge that came. Oh, sir. Ah, today was a bad deal. A lion came and took 10 sheep. I'm sorry, sir. I had to run for my life and save the ones I could save. Not Jacob. Jacob, wow. He had those hazards. But he took care of them. Came back, presented his records. Everything was complete. That's integrity. That's integrity to a cruel boss. Can you handle that? Why did he do it? Because of the love of God that he was grounded in. Look at you today. Just one shout from your boss. Ah, I'm not doing it again. Ah, hey, I can't handle this. Me? I can't handle this. I'm not doing it again. Mm. Ah, if this is how working in this place will be, man, I don't think I can handle it. Meanwhile, you're the same one who said, Ah, God revealed to me that I should go and walk in that place. And you're there one week in that place. You say, I can't do it again. God, this work is hard. Man, is this, ah, I can't do it again. You're your own God. You are your own God. You have not understood yet what it is to receive the love of God. Talk less of being grounded in it. 20 years under a cruel boss. Yet he came out wealthy. How did he come out wealthy? I'll tell you. You can read this for yourself. It's not because he never played smart. He was faithful to his boss. But guess what began to happen? I had a broko I I think I need to. Well, maybe you should read it yourself. The same chapter, chapter 31. When he was explaining to his wives how he became wealthy, he, told, he had to tell them because he was always in the field. Actually, he sent a message to them to come and meet him in the field. 
And he explains to them. Because the children of Laban began to say, this guy has stolen our father's wealth. He, he came here with nothing. Look at him now. He has herds and herds of, of sheep and cattle. So he had to explain to his wives first. Now, you know, sometimes we have men who, who even their wives don't know what they do. Honey, how did you buy that good car? Ah, it's the Lord, it's the Lord. Ah, God blessed me at work today. Uh, honey, how did God bless you? It's important to know. Jacob had to explain to them. Because there were things that happened that in the physical, you will look at it and say, nah, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Jacob, you played a Joro here. Jacob had to tell his wives, no, this was my experience. This was what happened. And what's it? Laban will come and say, look, Jacob, he will gauge the animals from experience in cattle, in, in animal um, husbandry or rearing. And then he will say, look, from now on, if this was give birth to speckled, straight, spotted ones, they will be my own. If they give birth to plain ones, they'll be your own. Now, because Laban have looked at it, that the possibility of them giving birth to plain is slim. Jacob would not argue. Ah. I think I need to read this. Ayan Nambra Kasha Kataya. I'm reading this for you because it's important. I know my time is almost up. Verse 9. Thus, now when you see the word thus, say this is how. Okay, so read from verse 8. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said thus, the ring streaked shall be thy wages. Then bear all the cattle ring streaked. How? Thus God had taken away the cattle of your father and had given it to me. And it came to pass, verse 10, and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the ram which leaped upon the cattle were ring streaked, speckled and grizzled. Did you see that? In the physical, they were not. But when it was time for them to meet, I will sleep and I will have a dream and I will see that it's the speckled ones that are mounting the cattle. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord spoke unto me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And he said, lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are rigged, straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. Did you see this? And the Lord will be my God. And here is God manifesting his love. I have seen what Laban is doing to you. Don't be afraid. Relax. We're in this together. Yes, sir. So what do we do? What did Laban say? Laban said that all the speckled one will be your wage. Yes, sir. Okay, don't worry. But sir, these ones will not give back to speckled one. Don't worry. Tonight I'll see you. Okay, sir. When it's time for them to conceive, the angel will appear to him. Say, Jacob, yes, sir. Look up. He will look up. He will see the animal mountain. Aha. And then they will give back. They will give back to exactly what he saw in that dream. Then Laban will come and say, no, okay, this season we're changing it. Now, this time the plain ones are mine. The, the speckled ones are mine. The plain ones are yours. Okay, sir. When it's time, the angel will appear. Say, look up. Plain ones. Okay. That was God helping Jacob. Why? Because he is his God. He's the Lord your God. 
brothers and sisters, look to him for your help. There is nothing impossible for him. Nothing. Can you trust him and take your eyes off men? Can you trust him and take your eyes off connections? Take your, eye, take your eyes off all those things. Trust him. He will fulfill every word he has spoken concerning you. I bless you this weekend. Rise. Fulfill God's dream. Enjoy the love of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.